This video is not intended for persons under the age of 13. Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you enjoy. And if you do, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you stay up to date on further content. Julian Chu and welcome aboard the USS Shadow Star, the flagship of, of course, Shadow Star. I'm Captain Richard, aka the Renegade, and this is Star Trek Online and a Starship review video. Where today we get to look at, well, I guess a legend in the making. A true coming together of variant ideas to, well, essentially give us something beyond the sum of its original parts. This will be taking a look at the stats and performance of this ship. I'll be doing this a little bit differently from my normal parameters, so. I hope you guys like the slightly refreshed style. I'll be basically saving the discussion on what the ship is capable of to the very end. Initially, we'll blast, semi blast through the stats, take the ship into combat, and see how well she does. Then, we'll discuss what she's truly capable of. So, with this being said, guys, <laughs> whether you are Federation, Klingon, Romulan or Dominion. I hope that you all are comfortable. Get your drinks. Mine is tea, Earl Grey. It's sitting right here for me. <laughs> and without further ado, allow me to introduce to you the mighty Kitima Alliance Battlecruiser. The stunning mighty and triumphant potential of the Federation and Klingon Empires when we work together. <laughs> I'm pretty sure part of intelligence has had a bit of an import on this as well. There is a lot that we can say about this ship. Luckily, this is not the visual review video. I imagine that will be quite long for you guys. Links in the description once it's out. But, there's plenty to say about stats on this ship. Oh my, there is plenty to say about on stats. We're looking at a ship that is bringing anti-protons back, including in its own armaments. It is an amazing trait and console that really screams to the tank proficiency. And she is more than capable of proving that she's a battlecruiser and ready for combat. Available from well, the get-go, she's a tier 6 leveling ship. She is a battlecruiser type. With, at level 50, 43,125 hull. And at level 65, she gets 56,250 hull. Making her... Well one of the toughest ships that you can possibly fly. As far as hull plating goes, she can take a lot of damage. A hull modifier is a impressive 1.25. But if you think her hull is impressive, her shield modifier is 1.3. This means she is right up there, good and hard. Turn rate is 7.5, nice and flexible for a cruiser. Impulse modifier, 0 0.16. What can we say? It's not bad. Inertia rating of 40, she won't be drifting around all of her targets, but she can certainly sw swing herself about. Great bonus power settings, Plus 10 to both weapons and shields. 
She has a typical device slot that you may expect, but may not expect of free, and is equipped with a cloaking device, courtesy of the Klingons. I'm sure the Romulans didn't have too much to complain about in this uh, situation. She's armed with five forward and three aft weapon slots, giving her a great amount of potential in a forward attacking arc, but also relatively good potential all round should you be a broadsider. Her turn rate doesn't really complement these weapon slots, but hey, it's not a problem. Her bridge officers, though, are brilliant. With a command. Well, a commander, sorry, a commander engineering position, a lieutenant commander tactical, lieutenant commander, whoops, I've got to double check what type that is, lieutenant commander science command position, a lieutenant universal and an ensign universal. Yes, the ensign can sort of be swept away. Those, those abilities aren't always that great, but well, with this ship, we're looking at a lot of potential. For those in the Admiralty, her stats for Admiralty is Engineering 46, Tactical 52, and Science 28. Slightly surprised by that, considering her defensive capabilities, but we shall not complain. She's a tough little cookie. Definitely something to uh, grace your doorsteps with. Now, bear in mind, guys, that if you wish to acquire her, it's very simple. It's an appointment process that you earn via the present event going on on Star Trek Online as of the date 28th of the 1st, 2020. You have plenty of time really to get access to the ship and you can buy out as well if you wish to buy out and you haven't done any of the actual event earnings then the total cost will be 6,000 zen that is the amount I had to spend in order to get this ship day one should you wish to work on it you can bring that down as if you do earn event marks then you will actually make it to cost less zen wise should you wish to buy out and get the ship early. Personally speaking, from the stats so far, I would already say she's worth the 3000 mark that you'd find typically for tier 6 ships. And then some, she is quite tough. Standard equipment, as you guys can see, is anti-protons. She strangely comes with photon torpedoes, which was a little bit unexpected. Kind of expected them to actually be quantums in this one's case. But anti-proton beam arrays means, eh, well, we're definitely seeing a comeback of the anti-proton weaponry. Typical deflector, impulse, warp, and shields. We've got no nothing special there. Why would we? But we have got something specifically special in the, in the lines of her console, currently sitting under the tactical console. So, the console universal, the universal console should I say, aligned anti-proton shielding is a amazing console, specifically for anyone who is a tank. The way this console works, well, first of all, let's scream some happiness. Passive-wise, she has plus 17.1 anti-proton damage. This is great because, as most of you players will know, currently within STO, disruptors and phasers rule the roost. In fact, phasers are killing it with way too many consoles outside of typical tactical consoles boosting phaser damage. In fact, it is actually possible on this ship, if you were to go for a phaser build, to put in science and engineering consoles that will all boost phaser damage. Says something there. Now you can't quite do that with anti-protons. So, straight away, the aligned anti-proton shielding is good for that anti-proton damage boosting. 
But it also comes with a plus 17.1 to Starship Shield capacity. Great for you Shield Tank players. Now Alliance Shield works very similar to the attack pattern, sorry, not attack pattern, to Tactical Team. Where Tactical Team when activated will realign your shields to strengthen the weakest shield, this one does something a little bit better with that weakest shield. So for all, it will give you an incoming damage buff, oh, incoming damage buffed weapons, haste and shield potential. Essentially for 20 seconds plus 0 to 25 percent energy weapon firing haste and shield capacity and regeneration. This is magnificent. This will scale with the number of times you're being shot at in the duration. Enables Alliance Lance. Well. <laughs> That's something to be terrified of. Perhaps we have something very dangerous here. Something that could be confirmed to be a powerful anti-proton lance. Up to now we've not had that. We've had plasma, disruptor, and phaser. Now we have anti-proton. With the crystalline energy torpedoes, it would seem anti-proton is definitely making a powerful comeback. Lord, I'm happy. Might have to pull out with the felix again. <laughs> So we get on to the trait, Automated Shield Alignment. This is magnificent. This will give you damage for missing shield and shield heals for defeat on defeats. So this is essentially, oh sorry, this is the one that I meant was actually similar to the tactical team. The console itself is great in the fact that it is essentially taking all the incoming damage and boosting your defense and firing haste. In other words, helping tanks maintain the threat or helping DPS hit harder. However, this trait is specifically tank biased. So, from 0 to 15% bonus all damage, currently at 0% uh, because I'm not missing any shield strength. When and when you defeat a foe, you restore 25% of your shields maximum once per 5 seconds. So, say your shields are down to 50% and you kill 2 enemies in 10 seconds you will restore back to 100% shield. Plus, that is great because it's scaling on the basis of how much shield you're missing in total. So, if you've got an entire quadrant out, you've gained a fourth of your possible bonus damage. Now, admittedly, as much as this is a great, great thing for tanks, tanks also tend to be the ones that aren't losing shields. Well, if you're a shield tank, so it won't be for your shield tanks, but it will be for your whole tanks, giving you a secondary layer of defense to take more damage. And sure as hell, that will also help DPS players, as, well, they tend to be a bit spongy on the shields anyway. More missing shields just mean the DPS players do more damage. But enough of this. I told you guys we're gonna see what this ship can do. Now, <laughs> I feel like, in the spirit of things, I should be using anti-proton. But I don't have a good anti-proton build. Can I do something about this? Give me two seconds, guys. Welcome to the Frong system. Everyone relax. You're all going to be nice, comfortable, and safe. 
Now I have actually achieved something. I went and actually sorted out an anti-proton build with some anti-proton boosting. This did require me to get some new fleet consoles, but hey, I've got them all. I've upgraded them all. We're working with what we've got. We'll also be using the Voth Phase Decoy console and the Iconians Polymorphic Probe Array as they both boost anti-proton damage. This is putting this ship very much into its um, effective role of being able to have some decent apple and damage and take some heavy damage. Let's see how well we do. This should be fun. Ship is under attack. Actually used the wrong cloak just then I just realized. But here we come back out and go through it. I should mention that the item is in the complete Defelic anti proton set. Fully upgraded to Mark 15, so this is the Defelic, or the overload of the Defelic dual beam bank. The Defelic distortion quantum torpedoes. Whoops. And finally, we have the Tefelic. Oh, what's it called? Let's bring it up while I'm actually using. Sorry, the Interphasic Quantum Distributor. So, we're using quite the strong little power set here. I think the next ship is going to have to help us test bed the alignment. Although that's better on number shots incoming. Let's see if we can find a group of enemies then. Great bunch of the cloak. Ooh, look, Galar class. You're not really much of a challenge though. Gemidar Battle Cruiser, that would be something, alright. Ah, there we go. Let's grab their attention. Hello, boys. I'm here. Watch the shields go down and let's align. I think we'll target this one directly in front of us. And get ready. Oh, wow, okay. That was a modest output. Not over the top. Look at that gym the light battle piece is coming down as well. Coming to cause us some bits of trouble, are you? Wow, don't be angry in the battle. I mean, in the battle, I see here. Someone has seen me though. This is really damaged. Too bad I don't have the trait to properly test yet. But, uh, who needs the trait where you can just regenerate? <laughs> Taking the lead, I should probably also bring up that I am a simple ship. Let's actually swap into its more desired power settings. Um, when it lets me. Hey, can I um like actually change my weapon power setting level? Come on. Um, Place and auxiliary up. 
engine power to minimum. There we go, let's go with this. about the better than the taking it really has a difficult to take the time to do alongside the damage well minus the damage of the sword that's damage we're seeing here not bad I will say that not bad at all definitely feel like this ship is performing as well as I'd expected it to Let's have some fun with this Keldon. We're gonna go absolute maximum damage output that we can do in one go. See how well this pulls off. So I'm just gonna wait the 30, well, 40 seconds it takes to recharge. Hopefully the Keldon doesn't actually notice me here. That would be very bad. Okay, this looks like I'm going to be able to get myself in a good position as well. Keldon is circling with me. That is not a great thing for me. It's better. Right. 13 seconds to go. I don't think I'll wait for that last bit. Well, I am kind of going to wait for it. Here we go. Effective, high damage output. Turns out the CSN09 is actually doing all right. Hmm. Gotta say, I'm happy with performance. Very, very happy with performance. <laughs> oh my. So. What can we really say about this ship then? Let's finalize and summarize. Stats are pretty good, aren't they? And the ship has got some good potential in battle. Definitely is amplifying up the use of anti-proton weaponry. I would go so far as to say that you will be seeing more anti-proton builds as a result. But I think that will be sticking more with the tank players for now. It's safe to say that this ship is quite powerful doi i've just realized earlier i did not mention how many consoles this ship had well we you saw on screen anyway four tactical four engineering three science you can tell i'm a little bit thrown off by swapping things around a little bit i do apologize but let's be positive here this ship is a brilliant demonstration of what you can get is the Federation and the KDF was to work together. Her hull and shield are extremely strong. She's got a fair turn rate for a cruiser, maybe not so much a barrel cruiser, but what can we say? The impulse modifier is pretty damn good and her tactical layout is amazing. safe to say we have got a powerful ship on our hands she'll be an amazing DPS ship because she has the right bridge officer layout to deliver serious damage we have at least two bridge officers that can be used tactically wise so her DPS potential is going to be there Four tactical consoles landing her well in DPS and well with five forward weapons and three aft though her 
totally doesn't quite match up with this. Her four engineering positions will give her the ability to, well, sort that out. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really find the term rate was a problem for me. I might be support DPS, it might be a problem for people that need even more maneuverability than I do, but I think she's pretty good. Support wise, really my role of things, she's, well, about average. Great that she has a Lieutenant Commander science position because this means that with one of the universal positions she definitely has enough scientific capability of being a great support ship. She is a cruiser and engineering abilities also make for great support abilities especially if you know which ones to use. So Learn more, she's probably gonna be a heal support on the field, very powerful heal support. Drain or control, she will definitely play exceptionally there. And safe to say, though you might not want to be using her console as a support, she's got the right console layout to make her quite devastating overall. Yeah, she's only got free science, but like I said, support doesn't necessarily rely on the science side of things, depending on the type of support player you are. She's at least going to be a definite healer. And, well, she'll do support DPS or hybrids pretty well. Follow up, we have the tank. Now, tank definitively lies in two main types, hull tank and shield a tank. And considering the fact that all tanks have to be naturally in some manner a DPS ship in order to generate the levels of threat they need to do, I say, hey, well, you need to be generating more threat than the DPS ships, and as DPS ships have such a high damage output, they are generating quite a bit of threat. This ship has brilliantly given the answer that tanks are looking for. Its trait and console both increase damage output, allowing this ship to actually begin to close the gap when flying as a tank with the DPS ships it's fighting with. In fact, it would actually say she has the potential to, well, she won't surpass the elitist DPS, but she will definitely, at an end game build level, she will be definitely matching the high end DPS capabilities. And that means this ship is definitely gonna be rolling tank really well if she can do that. Essentially, if you can match the other DPS players on the battlefield as a tank, well, one, <laughs> those poor DPS players are probably going to feel a little bit redundant at that point. And two, you're a danger on the battlefield. You are the flagship everyone will be fearing. Safe to say, this ship has dangerous potential thanks to that. The big things I like about this ship though, tank-wise, is the fact that her shield and hull are so high that you can, if you wanted to, Play with a typical tank build where you work heavily on threat boosting so as to, though you won't be dealing with the same amount of damage as DPS ships, you will be generating more threat because of threat boosting as DPS, sorry, as tanks naturally do. And if you was to go around that route, you can make yourself nigh on unkillable by being a hybrid host. Wow, it's hard to say. A hybrid shield hull tank it's not very often you will see players go both shield and hull for tanking and both have those scoring quite highly in potential with the four engineering and five sorry three science you will be able to make a very strong in her endurance side of things. Whether you want to shield cap out and do whole regenerating, 
so anything that bleeds through is then quickly healed up it doesn't matter how you go about it this ship is going to be quite the threatening obstacle if you was to go for the full-blown endurance build safe to say if the Kobayashi Maru was this ship you could probably win and beat the Kobayashi Maru with a constitution class because I don't see Bird of Prey killing this one too easy. <laughs> We've got a delightful little ship here. Really, really brilliant ship in almost every way. I do enjoy the fact she's brought anti-proton back, so to speak. She's a tough cookie with a lot of potential, especially for players who know how to use it. She is a free ship to get, so you have no excuse for not trying to get this ship. And guys, it only takes about 30 minutes to an hour out of your day to earn the required score points in order to get this ship. You'll be working on it for a little while, about a month I believe, but you will end up with the brilliant little reward as a result. She's free, guys. She is definitely worth getting. If you have to pay Zen to get her because you miss out and you are looking at anything below 3,000 Zen, I will not complain. She's definitely worth it. If you're at the 3,000 Zen mark, still worth it. Top into the 4,000 Zen. Because of what she can do for you tanks, yeah, she's probably worth it for you guys as well. Though, at this point, we have 3,000 Zen ships that can really match your tanking. Well, sort of. We, if you're a support player, that's probably where you want to cut the line. And uh, DPS? Depends if you're looking for a more enduring, a more tough and ready battle cruiser. If you are DPS looking for that, then possibly there. Going above it to the 5,000 and 6,000 marks, no, she's not worth it, but I did just pay 6,000 Zen to get this ship, so uh, I, I guess I really can't say anything, can I? Damn. If I had to score her, DPS, I would score her. DPS, I'd score her 8.5 out of 10. Mostly because I feel like I'm too nice half the time. <laughs> but she's pretty good. Tank, I'm going to score her 10 out of 10. Only because she can shield and hold tank with a beast level. And her console and trait massively back her up, so she's going to get 10 out of 10. Probably one of the first tanks I've given that to. Support? I would say support's a weak spot, but I will give her... I'll give her 7 out of 10. Overall, this ship scores a 9 out of 10 with me. She is very brilliant. And hell, she's much nicer than the old Lucari Science Festival we got, which was actually a triangle flipping Dorito. It's nice to see that this time round, we've got something creative, very stunning, useful to just about every player, and, well, a little unusual. I haven't really had that since the Samsar. I hope this video has been helpful to you guys and I greatly appreciate you watching towards the end. If you guys have any thoughts on this ship, anything you want to say about the ship, then please message down in the comments section and I'll be sure to respond to you. If not straight away, I definitely will get there. Any questions, feel free to ask and of course, to all of you who have supported me by watching the end of this video, massive, massive thank you. 
and to my very generous and loyal patrons and donators. To you guys, a huge thank you. You're helping this channel approach one, becoming my dream job, as I really hope it will become, and two, its primary goal of not being an ad channel, but instead funded by the viewers, by the support of you guys. With this being said, if you do wish to support this channel on a personal level, there are links in the description, but I primarily ask that you go down the description to look for two things. One, if you want to see the visual review of this ship, it will be down there once done. And two, well, there is our social media, specifically Discord. Come along and join the crew at the Discord server where you guys will have a chance to get in on the conversations and share your thoughts and opinions on anything you wish to discuss in any of the two tabs, whether it be Mysterious V Shadow Star or Star Trek. Star Trek Online's base of operations for Shadow Star, this channel, Richard Shadow Star. We have our all general tab for everything else, and well, you can also share your own crew clips, screenshots, your own videos and perhaps get yourself shared in one of my videos under our Crew Clips tab. Finally, the most important thing about Discord is the fact that you will never ever miss a video with either channel as I always share every video when they go up right there, nice and loud in the announcements and you will also know every single time I'm streaming. Safe to say, you don't miss a beat. Unlike with the YouTube bell, where you might miss a couple of things. I'm very long winded at this point guys, so thank you for watching, and until next time, remember... <laughs> for glory and prosperity of your people, prosper and live long and eternal. I don't know, I didn't really think that one through. I should have come up with something before I do in this video. <laughs> Helm! Oh yeah. Go.